Have you ever heard the expression for you? Somebody said, I got something for you. This is just for you. This expression that at least you heard at least once in your lifetime. Followed up by something good. Hopefully. I mean, you would hate to have somebody say, I got something for you. All right, let me have it. And they punch you. <laughs> no, you would be thinking of a gift. Good news. So, we're going to run through the Bible. What God has for you and me. If you open your Bible to 1 Peter 5, 7, as you see on the screen. 1 Peter 5, 7, casting your care upon him, God, for he careth for you. Well, there we go. God cares. For you. Satan don't care for you. The world. Go ahead and die. And they'll think about you. Maybe a day. A week. A month. I mean a spouse will think of their. Their other spouse. For a lifetime. But I've had the death of two wives. They were very friendly. They were very well known. Lisa died in 2010 and Tracy died in 2019. And you know what? Very few people think about them, say anything. But once in a while, you'll come across something. Oh, how's. I'm so sorry to hear about. And you may fall out of love, you may break up, you may get divorced. You may get separated. You may find out, you know what, you're not compatible. You may find out you, your church doesn't care about you. They got other agendas. Yet, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Casting your care upon him. Good and bad care. Whatever you care. Whatever's on your mind. Whatever you're thinking about. Cast it upon the Lord. Why? For he careth for you. Now this is a light study. we got a handful of verses we're going to look at. This is only the tip of an iceberg. Of an iceberg you can't measure. This would be like taking a gigantic iceberg, melting it, and taking all the water from that iceberg, putting it in some kind of pot, and this study would be taking your finger and putting it in that water and coming out in that little drip. <laughs> like the, the rich man in hell. There's just so much that God will give us. There is so much that God is giving us. There is so much care that the Father has for his children. For Jesus Christ. He'll never leave thee or forsake thee. You're sealed. That's for you. You are a saved Christian by the faith and belief in Jesus Christ. God cares for you. You don't care. Listen, don't get the atmosphere. You know, God loves, you know, everybody. No, he don't. God don't care for everybody. The man that rejects Jesus Christ, God doesn't care for him. God is long-suffering enough to keep on trying to get that man to hear about the gospel and to hear about Jesus. That's not. For God so loved the world that he gave. That's past tense. When you, when you forsake Jesus, when you reject Jesus, there's no more love. It's long-suffering. The only way to get the love of God is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And become a child of God. And if you are a child of God, He cares for you. Now let me ask you, like I said, death. A lot of people forget who you are within a day, a week, a month, years. Maybe the other you will die. Let me ask you, when will God die? When will God forget about you? 
And the answer is never. God will never end caring for you. No matter the vile sin you do, saved. No matter if, if you deny the Lord Jesus Christ like Peter. Jesus cared enough for Peter. Think about that. The prodigal son. The father cared for the son. You have a God that cares. God is to his children that are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. God will never say, who cares? Now he may say no. He may say not now. When you are in your trials and you catch whatever care you have upon him, he will never reply and, uh, who cares? I'm too busy. It's not important enough. That's not God. It's not God at all. For you. For he careth for you. First Peter 1. First Peter 1, 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. If you are saved and your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, do you realize what that's likened to? Have you ever taken a trip somewhere, wherever? And you got to call ahead. Maybe you didn't take a trip. Maybe you're going to an important restaurant. And whatever the restaurant or the hotel is, you have to call and make reservations. You say, hi, this is the Haywards. We want uh, September 8th at 3 o'clock. We like a table or we like a room. And what, today they put everything on the computer. But they used to open up a book and say, okay, date Haywards what table or I main room. And then when you go to that hotel or you go to that restaurant or both, you walk up to the front desk, you walk to, to the major dean, you say, hi, we have a reservation, Haywards. And he opens up the book. Well, I know today they do computers. I'm old fashioned. When he opens up the book, looks at it, he goes, okay, yeah, Haywards. We got table 47 reserved for you and your family. Hayward, we got rooms 28 and 29. We got rooms next to you. Your name is written down for that spot, that, that table, or that room, or that space. If you are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, your name is in the land's book of life, the reservation book to say you have a place. You have your name listed. In heaven. For you. A place of an inheritance. Incorruptible. Nothing will get corrupted. There is no sin. Undefiled. No wickedness. In heaven. You don't ever have to worry about doing or saying wrong. You ever said something you shouldn't have said? You ever done something accidentally you shouldn't have done? That's not heaven. Ever have a thought you shouldn't have? That's not heaven. Ever have a tear? Uh, uh, sorrow? It's not heaven. Where it's incorruptible, holy, and right, eternal, no days, no years, no months, no centuries, without time, no death, no departing, holy and righteous, before the Almighty God and the Son and the Holy Spirit, all the angels, the seraphims, the cherubims, the elders, other Christians, Old Testament saints, will never die, will never get boo-boos, will never get aches and bruises and, and uh, 
bent over and sore knees and need hip replacement and, and cancers and, and troubles. We will not have all that in heaven. And if you are saved, the Bible says, verse 4, reserved in heaven for you. And if your name's in the Lamb's Book of Life by the blood of Jesus Christ, you'll go up to heaven. <laughs> and uh, I know it's not going to happen like this. You know, absent from the body, present with the Lord. But, you know, we give it a little straight. You'll walk up to the gate and say, name, Stiley William Hayward. Why should we let you in? April 24th, 1987, I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ cleansed me from all sins. Open the book. Yep, your name's there. Come on in. Now, it's not going to happen like that, but you know what I mean. Peter's not going to be there checking people in. He's too busy praising the Lord. That's a Catholic fantasy. But that, that's the thing is, you realize that the great white throne judgment, there are saved people. The books are open. And if your name is in the books, there's a spot reserved in heaven for them. And if their name is not in the book, they don't have the reservations, they go to the lake of fire. <clears throat> if Today, if your name is not in the Lamb's Book of Life before the rapture, you will die and you'll go to hell. If your name is in the books in the heaven, the land book, the, the land book of life, reserved in heaven, if you die, I mean, rapture's gone. If you die, you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Why? Your name's in the book. He knows those that are his. Colossians. Colossians. One five. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, where have you heard before the word of truth of the gospel? What's for you here? Hope. A hope that's laid up for you. In heaven. You have a reservation in heaven. If you say. Now you got a hope. In heaven. You're saved. You don't have to. Oh I hope I made it. I hope I go to heaven. No it's a different kind of hope. It's an assurance hope. I know I'm going to heaven. I know my hope is in heaven. There's no doubt. And think about the glory when you do get to heaven. You know, I want to see the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to hear the seraphim. Holy, holy, holy. I can't even imagine what that's going to sound like. I, I'm going to hope to see my wife. My grandma, my grandpa. Right now, I, I have an unborn child in heaven. So, my children are living now. They're saved. There are people I witnessed to. There are people I dealt with. They got saved. They may be in heaven today, too. It's a hope. It's laid up. A hope that the world can't give you. A hope that the devil can't give you. And it's laid up for you in heaven. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. Titus 2.13, I believe. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 11. Uh-oh. 1 Corinthians 11, 24. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. 
This do in remembrance of me. Paul's talking about the Lord's Supper. Here is Jesus was whipped, punched, beaten. He had his beard pulled. Isaiah 53, the suffering servant, not Israel. It's the Messiah. The Bible says that his back was like plows in a field. You see these pictures of Jesus supposedly on the cross. That's not, you couldn't recognize him. He had gone worse than any human being of pain and suffering and brutality. He had the soldiers of the Sanhedrin and the Roman soldiers. Can I say reverently? They beat the crap out of Jesus. And Jesus allowed them. One time that they took a sack or something and put it over his head, and they were beating him. Like, Come on, tell, tell us who did that one, Jesus. And they're beating him. And they're pulling his beard. And when he got to that cross, and then he's nailed to that cross, he's suffering pain. He's just a bloody, pussy mess of open, bruising body, his body was broken by fist, by thorns, by whips. The body, and the Bible says, take, eat, this is my body, Jesus, which was broken for you. Why did Jesus suffer? Why was he beaten? The Bible says, for you and me. You put you. Can you imagine somebody who's not saved? Can you imagine somebody who rejects Jesus? Huh. Yeah, he, he did it for them. But rejection of Jesus is you don't have the hope and you don't have the reservation. And you don't have God caring. You can't even say Jesus suffered. That's mild. I don't know what word I could use to describe the torture that was put upon the body of Jesus. I can't even imagine the pain. And I hate pain. And then when I think, when you're to think about Jesus on that cross, a bloody, pussy, bleeding goo of a human, and you say, why? And the Bible says, for you. You need to now go over. We don't have the time to read Isaiah 53. He was, he was bruised and wounded for us. The chastisement of peace was upon him. That's for you. John, John 16, 26, Jesus, at that day you shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you, that I will pray the Father for you. Jesus, whose body was absolutely broken and marred and bruised and scarred and nailed and cut and pulled, right now, today, yesterday, and if you have a tomorrow, for you, Jesus is praying to the Father. Talk about our prayer life. I'm the type of person when a serious prayer comes up, 
Then I, I'll call, I'll get hold of my pastor and then when the church, my church said, okay, anybody got a prayer request? I'll be the, try to be the first to raise my hand. I, if it's really serious, I go on Facebook and I take prayer needed or I'll give the name, usually just the first name. You know, you try to get everybody in that prayer line. I've done that with Lisa and I've done that with Tracy. When I come to seriousness, I try to get everybody. I, I, I had with Lisa. I'm not kidding you. With my Facebook and her Facebook and the people we knew, we had people all over the world praying for Lisa. How about the Bible saying, Jesus saying, I will pray the Father for you. Can you imagine in your prayers in heaven, the Bible, Jesus says, Father, fill in your name. How about the Holy Spirit praying for us, making groanings in, in uh, or the groanings in, I forget, that cannot be uttered. Do you realize you got two thirds of the Trinity praying to the Father while the Father says, I care for you? I'm going to give you hope. I'm going to break my body for you. I'm going to have a reservation for you, my home. While, while the Son, the one who suffered and died for us, our Savior, is in heaven, praying to the Father for you and I. For you. That's remarkable. John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I guess Jesus says he's God. So the Jehovah Witness. In my Father's house are many mansions. Don't be cottage or whatever. The modern Bibles change it. Rooms and junk like that. The Bible, many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. What? And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. There is a place, a mansion in glory. Plural mansions. Now, do we all get one mansion, or is there mansions for a group? Of people? I don't know. But there, never mind. It's a mansion. It's a place being prepared by Jesus for you and me, for you. I prepare a place for I go to prepare a place for you and prepare a place for you. Not only do we have a reservation in heaven for you and I, but there's a place in heaven for you and I. You know, we call the head through the blood of Jesus Christ through the Calvary. We call, we said, We want to believe. Put our name down in the Lance Book of Life. I believe in Jesus. Our name went in the Lamb's Book of Life, so when they die, here's the reservation book, and boy, wait till you see you get your room. Wait till you said you see you get your table. You know, reservations for a restaurant or for a hotel room. Boy, you wait till you, your room and your, your food or whatever we're going to have in heaven. Because the reservations for you is also the place that's prepared for you that he was broken for you to give you a hope for you 
that Jesus prays for you that God careth for you. That's remarkable. That's take a stop out of your day and count your many blessings. 22.20 This is the Last Supper. The cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. Not only was his body broken for you, but that blood that was spilt out of the body of Jesus that Acts 20.28 20, says is God's blood that used to be purchased. Those that are saved, the blood of Jesus Christ spilt for you. And me. The body was broken for you and me. Every bit of the bleeding and every bit of the, the broken and the, the hitting and the nails and, and the thorns and the thorns making us bleed, the nails making him bleed, the whips making him bleed. Meanwhile, the, 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 what do you say? What word is tearing apart the body? Yet not a bone was broken. All for you. Look at verse 19. He took the bread and gave thanks. And Paul talked about it. And break it and gave it to him and said, This is my body which is given for you. Paul tells us to give it for you when it was broken. The extreme vast I'm being very careful with my words here. I should have wrote torture upon the body of the Savior Jesus Christ 100% God, 100% man. The torture that the creation put upon him. The body marred, scarred, ripped open. The pain Jesus said was given for you. Paul said the suffering of Christ is for you and me. Luke will go on to say the blood. Acts 20.28 20, says it's God's blood. From the garden where, where, where his sweat dropped as the drops of blood. To being beaten and abused and tortured, whatever the Bible does not tell us, by and of the Sanhedrin and their soldiers. And the abusement and the torture of the Roman soldiers. And the, the crown of thorns banned upon his head. As he carried that cross, as he's going to Calvary, that holy God blood is dripping on the ground of Jerusalem. They nail him to that cross, adding more blood for you. They take him down off the cross. Someone takes an iron spear and pierces his side and blood and water or water and blood comes flowing out for you. That's the gospel. 
The gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day. You know, that, that turret, whatever they're trying to shroud, whatever they call it, I don't think it can be Jesus. Because I would think whatever they wrap Jesus in had to be absolutely filled. Because, you know, you know it, it, that blood that was in Jesus had to all come out. And there was blood all over him. Whatever was left that would be soaked up in the clothing, I'm going to say clothes, rags, whatever you want to call it, the burial cloth. Genesis. Genesis 9. This is after the flood. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. We just had Thanksgiving. And we have to hurry up Thanksgiving because because the football game. And we got to hurry up the football game because of Black Sunday. I wonder how many Christian homes ate their meal. I wonder how many pastors and Sunday school teachers had the Thanksgiving. Or their wives. And were truly thankful. That everything that was in the kitchen and everything that was on the table, everything that was in the candy dish or the nut dish, uh, just not okay. It's Thanksgiving Day. How about all our food, including meat, every moving thing that's Cow, pig, goose, duck, chicken, dove, quail, deer, shall be meat for you. Don't lay on this religion of vegetarian. Because God said meat. Now for the Jews under law, God will restrain some meat, but not all. God intended now for man to have some meat and green herbs. You know, your plate should have meat, a potato, noodle, rice, and a veggie. That's what God wants. And he done it. For you. Look at the things he's done for us. Nine things for you. And how many were salvation? How many were the assurance of salvation? How many are for you and your comfort? While Jesus suffered. And then he gives us meat and vegetables and fruit. All these things we should also think about coming away from Thanksgiving is we ought to be naming these as one of our many blessings of the Father. For you, God cares. For you, through Jesus, if you're saved, you have reservations in heaven. For you that are saved, you have a hope that's in heaven. For you that are saved, Christ suffered for you. For you, Jesus is praying to the Father. For you... Jesus has prepared a place for you. 
The blood of Jesus Christ was shed for you. The body of Jesus is given for you. And whatever you put in your mouth for food is given for you all by God. Shall we count your many blessings, name them one by one? I just gave you nine. You're right. I did that one day. I, I, I put the song on on my on the YouTube and started playing. I, I started singing. I didn't write down. I was just, you know, pretending I was writing as I was named. And you know, I, I started thinking about. Thank you, Lord, I can hear the song. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, I got fingers to write. Thank you, Lord, I got a pen to write. Thank you, Lord, I got paper to write. <laughs> I, was, I didn't write them down. I'm like, I had a double page full of blessings just sitting there. I could see. I could hear. I can write. I have understanding. I, I'm in my right mind. I, I'm blessed. I, I got four walls and a ceiling. I got sunshine. I got rain. I got my fish I watch. And I got my birds I hear. I got a wonderful daughter and a wonderful son. And uh, my mom is saved. And my grandparents are saved. And uh, I'm going to heaven. I know I'm going to heaven. And I had this hope of heaven. I'm just, I knew you to keep on going and keep on going and keep on going. I don't think you ever can stop naming your blessings for you.